Ralph Ranick has used plenty of formations at Manchester United, hasn't he? The four triple two system that he really wanted to work, it didn't work. Used the four four two, that didn't stick either. The four four two diamond, that didn't stick either. Neither did the four two three one that we'd use so often under Solskjaer. But in the last couple of games against Villa and Brentford, we'd use the four three three, and for me. We've seen the foundations of the system that Ragnik has to use going forward to get the most out of this Manchester United team. What I'm going to do in this video, you've asked me to do more of these tactical videos. Here's one, and this is a really important one because I think this will shape the rest of the season for United. Whether or not we sign someone in the January transfer window, it doesn't really change this. I'm going to speak about what he did at Hoffenheim and the tactics he used there because he used a 4-3-3 before. I'm going to take a look at the Villa game, the Brentford game, and take a look at the tactics board. See which players are benefiting and why it's so important that this formation, in my opinion, is used going forward. Please, if you would, consider subscribing to United People's TV. I hope the mic sounds better. New mic, new lighting on the way. I know the lighting's not perfect, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Don't worry about it. But let's go over here and let's start this video by talking about Hoffenheim. Because Ralph Radnick did use a 4-3-3 at Hoffenheim. And that's what we have to use, I suppose, as a blueprint. for Maybe what he's going to be doing at Manchester United. And it speaks here about the pressing traps. They want the opposition to play in a into a central midfielder in order to press him with numerical superiority. And that's the big thing that this 4-3-3 immediately gives you. Ragnik's buzzword, control. Three midfielders allows you to actually have control. Now, we're going to speak in depth about Scott McTominay and Nemanja Matic and the weakness that exists in that number six role. But as we've seen in the first 30 minutes against Villa and the second half against uh, Brentford, it can work with this current Manchester United team. If you scroll down here in a bit more detail about exactly what this 4-3-3 and the pressing triggers did at Hoffenheim, as I said, the 4-3-3 system ensured that Hoffenheim had enough midfielders to press in the centre of the pitch, while the wingers, because the wingers were there, given actual width, it forced the opposition to play inwards. I think we saw that against Brentford. But if we look, if we if we go here and we look at the two lineups that we saw, this is the game against Aston Villa. Cavani up front there, Matic as the holding midfielder, and it worked really well, didn't it? For the first 30 minutes, Manchester United, everybody seemed to know their position. And I think we all know the player who's benefited most from this system with two goals against Villa and two assists against Brentford. It's definitely Bruno Fernandes, and we're going to be speaking about him in depth. Don't you worry about that. But everybody worked really well in that first 30 minutes. I really, of course, am focusing on the first 30 minutes against Aston Villa. And the second half against Brentford. Because we're not a team right now that can control a complete 90-minute game, are we? We just can't. I don't know whether that's down to attitude, players, formation, style. Anything you want to say it's down to. It's probably a culmination of all those factors. But certainly, the first 30 against Villa with this team, we were very, very good. And certainly, for the whole second half against Brentford, we were excellent. With McTominay playing in the number six role, surprising all of us, I think. Because we saw him play there against Villarreal and he was so bad, we were like, well, McTominay can't play there. He can't play in that disciplined role. Proved us all wrong against Brentford. Of course, you might say, Sam, it's only Brentford. I'd be like, yeah, it is only Brentford. But Brentford have played plenty of other top sides and given them some serious problems. Brentford are not like a Norwich promoted team. Brentford have a style and they stick to it. They're a very tough team to play against, very intensely pressing. We saw it in the first 45. If they had better finishers and we didn't have David De Gea, probably would have been 2-0 down at halftime. Because they were crappy finishing, because we had the hair, it was nil-nil. But in the second half, this team worked. It worked properly. And I want to take a look at the tactics because it's really important we understand this. And I really genuinely think the 4-3-3 is what we need to do going forward. There's so many positives. That, in my opinion, and I've said this all along, I maintained it. This was the formation I think that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was working towards. We never had a proper number six. We never had somebody who could dominate that position of the pitch. So it didn't really matter what happened. We were always, we always had a, a, a soft underbelly. And I still think that exists until we sign a proper out and out defensive midfielder. But I tell you what, I was really impressed with McTominay against Brentford. Now, of course, again, I, I, I'm not saying this is the, what I'm saying here is that Randnick has found the foundations that he needs to build on. I'm not saying that this is the end product because we are far from the end product. That is not what this video is designed for. But it's designed for us to talk about what we've seen that's good in the Brentford game, what we've seen that's good in the Villa game and what we need to take going forward. 
as hell. I like to focus on the positives. You can focus on the negatives and focus on the first half if you want, but I'm not going to. So maybe this video isn't for you. But McTominay really did well. He properly screened in front of that back four. All that defensive midfielder has to do in a 4-3-3 is basically screen that defense. Make sure that he operates inside this position and he's protecting his defense there. He's winning the ball there. And if he needs to, at any point, he can break through the lines. And that's what Matomane did really, really well against Brentford. He was aggressive when he needed to be. He was disciplined when he needed to be. His decision-making was spot on. Now, can he do that against West Ham? I suppose we'll see on Saturday. I actually thought that it was going to be Nemanja Matic at start, not that not the started there, but I said, I want United to play 4-3-3 for the rest of this season. And I want Matic to start most of the games and Matomane to come on. And maybe that will happen in some of the games. But Matomane, for sure, really showed that he can play that role. And by him doing that, it opens everything else up. In particular, that man. This is Bruno's best position. Bruno needs to have the ability to be over here, be over there, be there, be there, be everywhere, be, ever, be wherever he wants without leaving an absolutely phenomenal gap here, which is what he does when he plays in the number 10 role. If, if Bruno's playing number 10 and he's doing that and he's supposed to be here and all of a sudden he's over here, it leaves a huge gap when United are playing with two midfielders. Look at that gap. Look at that gap there. Ronaldo can't do anything. Fred and McTominay have no player to pass to. It takes away what is a good aspect of Bruno's game and turns it into a negative. And that's his ability to get about, his desire to constantly make space, make himself available for the pass. Playing inside this formation with a 4-3-3 allows Ragnick to let Bruno do that. And Fred was pretty damn poor for that first game, for that first half, sorry. And then much, much better in that second half. I think Donny van der Beek, this is, there's far more um, of an argument here to play Donny van der Beek uh, and certainly give him more game time inside this formation than there is inside a formation where we're playing a 4-2-3-1. I think this role really will suit van der Beek. But if we're really talking about what's probably going to happen going forward, and we've got the Champions League in like, how long? A few weeks' time? like just About a month's time. I, think, I really think we should expect and prepare to see this. Hopper and Bruno is the two number eights in front of either McTominay or Matic. It depends on who, I suppose, is fit and who's on form, X, Y, Z. But that is probably the best thing that United could hope for between now and the end of the season in terms of how they can play. Now, Pogba, I'm so torn on. I really am. I'm like, do I really want to give game time to a player who just doesn't want to be here anymore? He wants to use these next few months as a shop window to go and get a move elsewhere. Part of me is like, hell no. But part of me is like, are we going to benefit more from getting those three, four months of great form from Paul Pogba or are we going to benefit more from him sitting on the bench? I think we're probably going to benefit more by him playing on the pitch. And Bruno and Pogba there as the two number eights, it would work brilliantly. It, we, we all know it would. Uh, it may, maybe it wouldn't be incredible. Maybe there'll be certain games where we have to press a bit more and that's where you're definitely going to get Pogba off the pitch and you're definitely going to get... Maybe it's threatening to turn off. What are you doing that for? where Pop is going to come off the pitch and Fred is going to go on like that. But the 4-3-3, it allows natural width. We know that width is king at Manchester United in the past day. Width is king. And whether it's Alanga, whether it's Sancho, whether it's Greenwood or whether it's Rashford, we have four players there who are more than capable of really operating in those roles. If I'm looking at what might be a weakness of this formation, it's going to be Ronaldo. And I'm not saying that that is a weakness. I'm saying in terms of how he's going to be fed by his teammates, he's going to find himself quite isolated. Like what we saw against Brentford, you saw Ronaldo picking up the ball on the left wing, picking up the ball in that position where Fred should have been, picking up the ball. He was dropping deep. He was switching to the wings. I think that's why he was so frustrated when he was taken off. Not only because he was just taken off, but because he put a shift in, running around, but didn't have that many direct opportunities himself. Whether it's Ronaldo playing there, whether it's Cavani playing there, I think they might find themselves slightly isolated, but it will give Manchester United that big, big C word. Control, control, control. That midfield three, whether it's McTominay or whether it's Matic, it works. For me, it's the system that we were building towards under Solskjaer, the system that relied and needed 
one defensive midfield signing. It still, uh, it still to this day staggers me that we chased Sancho so hard and ignored the fact that we needed a defensive midfielder. It made no sense. It made no sense whatsoever. Have we signed somebody like Ndidi, Basuma, Neves? I think this could have been a very, very different conversation this season. But, you know, lo and behold, United don't always get it right. We'll figure that out by now. Last eight years have been terrible. But McTominay really showed me he can play that role. And for me, you're looking at pressing triggers that we were, we were speaking about here. So this is what he's done at Hoffenheim. The pressing triggers of hoping for square passes. If you go down, where's the, is it that one there? Where is that one there? Is it this one here? Look, so this is it. If the, one, of the, one of the pressing triggers here is when the ball is played square between the centre-backs. That's when the winger would tuck in, the left winger, the centre-four would go onto him, get the numerical superiority. And then look, you've still got three bodies behind in midfield. It's so much... The shape makes sense. I think that starting 11 there, it makes sense. But again, we played great in the first half against Villa. We have to take the positives from these two games. And for me, the big positive is that formation, which has been found. It has been found that we can stop arguing about tinkering, about 4 triple 2 about 4 4 2 4 4 2 diamond, X, Y, Z. No. 4 3 3. That's the system we should be playing. Whether it's McTominay playing there or Matic, that's going to change. Maybe you could drop Fred there if you really wanted to. I'm not sure he could play that role, but I wasn't sure that McTominay could play that role. So maybe I could be wrong there. It suits this team. It has always suited this team. I think Ronaldo might struggle to get too many chances, but uh, if Tellez and, and Delo can play like they did in the second half against Brentford, he's going to get a hell of a lot more crosses coming in. And maybe he's going to get a few more headers. Because you've got a fee Ronaldo, one of the best headers in... Headers? 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 Headers in the game. Headers of the ball. There you go. In the game. But 4-3-3 for me. It's put a smile on my face watching United in that second half. Great counter-attacks. Great football. It's a shame we were so bad in the first half. What's your opinion, eh? What do you think about the 4-3-3 formation? Do you think it is the solution? Do you think I'm going over the top, say, Sam, geez, man, it's only been Villa and you know what happened there with a the 2-0 and it's only been Brentford. What are you talking about? I think I'm right. I think 4 triple 2 is the system that has a solution. The system between now and the end of the season that we need to start building on week in, week out. Players can't complain about what they don't know what to do. You know it. And McTominay, as we've seen there, he can play that sort that if he can play that well there in his first game in that role, he should continue to get better in it. That's why I think anyway. But let me know what you think in the comments below. For me, 4 triple 2 it's not right for this. I, I I wanted it to be right. I felt it was similar to four three to the four two three one, but clearly it didn't work. This one I think it can because it it takes away having two central midfielders and has one. It's a bit more pressure on McTominay or Matic, but that's why we need to sign. Maybe someone like Zakaria to strengthen in, in January and someone like Basuma or Neves or Ndidi in the summer. I don't know, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Is four three three the answer? If not, what is the answer? And what other positives are you taking? But for me, the biggest positive of this 4-3-3 formation is absolutely Bruno Fernandes' magic is back. Two goals against Villa, two assists against Brentford. I can't wait to see what he does next against West Ham. You let me know what you think in the comments below. If you did like the video, please consider dropping a like on it and subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Take it easy.